I'm gonna take you for a ride on my big green tractor. We can go slow. Hi, I didn't see you there. Hey guys, it's been a while. As you can see, we have a new piece of machinery here today on the property. Um, I've had it for, well, we got back in April and it is October now, so maybe six months now. And I'm very excited to share it with you. We're just gonna kind of do a, an overview of it real quick. This is a Kubota LX3310. Now, when I was doing research on these tractors, there's a bunch of stuff out there about the LX2610, but not many people have the 3310. They're very similar. Uh, we'll go over some of the differences here in a minute, um, but I'm super happy that we went with the 3310 over the 2610, and we'll talk about that, like I said, in a little bit. All right, some quick specs for this thing. This is on the same chassis as the LX2610 and the LX3310, same chassis. This is a 31 horsepower tractor, and it is uh, 27 PTO horsepower. The loader capacity off the front is about a thousand pounds and then the three-point hitch capacity at 24 inches so 24 inches from the three-point hitch is 1600 pounds so there's plenty of lift capacity here um, i'm gonna go kind of front to back on this thing like we said we started with the loader here this is a 60 inch bucket on this machine um, which has worked great for me for moving dirt around the property gravel cinders for the driveway and everything this has been pretty much the size that i've needed it to be um, i do not have any other front implements for this uh, a set of pallet forks I think would be really nice. I've needed them a couple times and don't have them, so that might be on the list of things to get. So you can see on the back of the loader here, we have the skid steer quick attach type connector. So that makes it super easy to put any implement you want on the tractor. Moving back, you have this grill guard, which already has holes pre cut in it for a mesh grill guard if you wanted one if you have a grapple or something this grill guard moves out of the way super simply you just pull this lever and pop it forward it takes a little bit it's not greased but it pops forward enough that we can now open the hood our hood latch and this just lifts right up so i'm not going to talk about the engine because i don't know anything about this engine the one thing that steers people away from the Let's see if i can put this in here the one thing that steers people away from the 3310 is that it has a um, it has emissions on it. So it's above the horsepower requirement that you have to have emissions on it. The B, I'm going to call it the 3550. I think it was maybe the 3050 something, but the B series tractor that needed emissions had a terrible reputation for emissions um, and had terrible problems. So if you look at the 3310, you'll always get people talking about the B series that had terrible emissions problems. I haven't had any issues on this. I'm about 30 hours and just the way I use it, um, actually driving it over here today, it wanted me to run the emissions on it. So I'll show you what that looks like in a second, but this will be my second time running the emissions and I haven't had any issues with it. I just bring it up to the RPMs it wants, go grade the driveway or move some dirt for a while and it ends and it's been totally fine. We'll see how that lasts long term. Another thing I want to mention on the front of this tractor is this little bar right here. That's all loosey goosey. This is a load level indicator. So when this piece gets to the notch right here and sits right in the center, it means the bucket is completely level. This has been very helpful to see where the bucket is when I'm back dragging or trying to get dirt into the bucket and trying to make good scoops, which I'm not very good at. So that is adjustable, obviously. Moving backwards, I have a engine block heater right here. So in the winter, once we're coming up on, I'll be able to plug this baby in and start it no problems. This is a must if you're living in a cold climate. This does have glow plugs in it, um, but even when it got, it got down pretty, when I got in April, we had some like 20 degrees days and I hadn't plugged it in at all. And it did, uh, it did start right up, but I could tell it, it was kind of on the lower end of when it would start. So. When we get into the winter and I've got to get up and plow snow and snow blow snow, and it is like negative 10 degrees, which is the coldest it got this last winter, I will be set with an engine block heater. Now you might be thinking, Jackson, you mentioned snow plowing and snow blowing, but you have an open station tractor. What's wrong with you? 
you should have a cab. You're right, I should have a cab. I'm going to be very cold, but you know what? I'm gonna bundle up and we'll get through it this winter. To add a cab on these is about six to $8,000, um, somewhere right in there from the factory. To get an aftermarket cab, it's about 3,500 to $5,000. So I'm gonna get an aftermarket cab for this, maybe. We'll see how it goes this winter. Um, but if I do want a cab, I'll get an aftermarket one and we'll put that on together. But I'm gonna be fine this winter. I'm just gonna bundle up and be a little, uh, a little, uh, whatchamacallit, the guy from Ghostbusters, the little marshmallow man in all my winter clothes. But it'll be great. Let's look at the station. All right, we're sitting in the station now. Um, you're gonna have to bear with me because I'm gonna be holding this camera while we do this. But down at the bottom here, we have this little pedal. You push the pedal down and you're able to tilt the steering wheel. So the one thing that I have noticed is if I'm going over lots of bumps, it comes untilted pretty easily, um, but I just need to slow down a little bit while I'm driving. I think anyone will tell you that. So then looking at my feet again, on the left side here, we have our brake pedals. There are independent brakes. So we have a brake for the left and a brake for the right. If you're trying to make those tight turns, and I've heard that in the winter, that is very helpful. Down here we also have our uh, cruise control, so I can pop it down and set the accelerator where I want it. You just pop it and it comes right off. As you can see, this is a hydrostatic transmission, so front that way, back that way. It is not a gear driven, so we don't have a clutch or anything down here. And I got this mainly for ease of use, ease of grading our driveway, and ease of backing up when I'm snow blowing. I knew I was going to have a rear snow blower and this will let me adjust the speed to exactly the speed I need without having to worry about my first gear and low is too slow or too fast. Down here, this is your adjustment for your uh, three-point hitch and how slowly or quickly it goes down when you release it because there's only hydraulics moving it up and then when you put it down, it's just flowing against those hydraulics. Back over here on the other side, you can see we have a diff lock so I can lock the differentials together on the back wheels. On the left side of the tractor here, you have your high, medium, low, and neutral range selector. So that's super handy. You have a PTO engage. And then this actually has a rear PTO, which it's set to now. It has a, oh, it's not gonna let me do it, but it has a rear and mid PTO, and then it has just a mid PTO selector. So I can run just the rear, the rear and the mid, or only the mid. On the other side, as you can see, we have four wheel drive and two wheel drive up here. And then this is your adjustment for your uh, three point hitch in the back. I'll go ahead and talk about the front dash control. We have left and right blinkers. You have headlights on, headlights off, and then you have your hazards, which stay on when the uh, tractor's off, which I'm not happy about because I ran the battery out once. On the other side, you have your emissions control button and then a parked PTO. So if you want to have your PTO running and not be in the tractor, say you're running a generator or a wood chipper, you just hold this down for a second and then it will turn on. And then if you want to run your PTO or run your emissions and park it, you can use this button here, or if you want to inhibit your emissions, you press this and it won't run emissions. That's if you're just driving it for a couple of seconds um, and you're not using it very long to go through the full emissions process, which is what I did today when I was coming over here. Start this baby up. This is the emissions and this is telling you to raise the RPMs. I'm like 90% sure. And then if I hit the emissions inhibit button, Oh, it's not gonna do it with me. Let's start this baby up. So I hit this. It's still gonna flash that it wants to do emissions, but it's not telling me to raise the RPMs to the emissions. And then obviously your RPM uh, adjuster right here. So you can see the RPMs, they go up, they go down. We'll leave that right there. Park and brake is set. Turn it off. Moving towards the back of the tractor, you have cup holders, you have armrests. This is an adjustable little doodad. This seat pack is adjustable here. Um, and then it also has uh, a spring suspension that's adjustable so you can loosen up or tighten the suspension on this, this seat up to make it a better ride. 
On the other side, you have a 12 volt car port, and then you have this little uh, thing right here, which I put my phone in a lot. On the back, it comes with this little uh, tool chest, which my plan is to get maybe a little bigger tool chest or a basket or something to put on the back to keep stuff in. Um, and that way I can replace this guy. It does hold a fair amount. So I have like some miscellaneous tools in here right now. Um, over the winter, I'll keep all the shear pins and stuff and tools to change those for the snowblower in here. And then on the back, we have our three point hitch. Right now, I have a land plane on this three point hitch. Um, soon it's going to get a snowblower. So that will be fun. We'll do a review of this land plane in a little bit. It's not going to be this video, but on the back, you have your adjustable top link. It's just the same like turnbuckle style that is normally you have a turnbuckle style adjustable uh, side link. I think it's called. I'm wrong. Someone tell me in the comments what this is called because I can't remember. And then you have your uh, little extender arm things. I'm blanking on all the three point hitch terminology right now, but these are really nice um, because you just pop the pin out and you can adjust it side to side if you need, if you need that, or if these need to come out further, um, you can do that too. So this has been really nice and really helpful. And it's got these oval slots when you're using ground um, engaging implements so that it can buck around a little bit if you hit rocks. I think that's all. You have a draw bar, obviously. Um, and then your rear PTO is right here behind that cover. So. No, your phone did not get muted or whatever you're watching this on. My mic died, so you're going to have to deal with it the old fashioned way with the voiceover. I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about why we actually got this tractor and what we use it for mainly. So uh, we live in an area where our road is not actually maintained by the county. It's just maintained by all the landowners in the area. And then in addition, we have like a 500 foot long driveway. So one, the road got really bad in the, uh, in the summer with potholes and all that. And for a while, no one was actually grading it. Once in a while, someone would drop some more cinders on it, but that was it. So the potholes were really bad. So we use this to grade the road and grade our driveway to actually keep it in shape. And that's been working out fantastic. Um, I'll do a review on the land plane and another video so you guys can kind of see how that works and how we do it. Um, but that's been working great. The other reason is earlier this year when it was winter, we got a couple storms and over a couple day period, we ended up having maybe like three to four feet of snow come down. And it got to the point where there was a neighbor that ended up paying about $10,000 to plow out all the way over to his house since the county doesn't plow our road. And then there was another neighbor who got stuck in their house for two weeks until they could get someone to come out and plow it. Um, and I actually had to park at the beginning of the county road and then just snowshoe to our house. So I'm not doing that again this year. So we mainly got this to grade the road and then also to act as a snowblower. We're going to put a snowblower on the back um, because it's less than half the cost of a front mount snowblower. Um, check out GP Outdoors comparison on those two things if you want. Shout out to him. But we're going to do a three-point uh, rear snowblower on this tractor. Um, and then that way we can keep the road and keep the uh, driveway clear in the winter and we don't get stuck out here. The other reason is just, I mean, when you have a tractor, you find all sorts of things to do with it. And it's been pretty indispensable being able to just move stuff around the property with the bucket. Um, I dug a little pond with the bucket and we're going to end up digging like a little bigger of a drainage pond out back. So we'll use the land plane for that and the bucket for that. But it's, it's been great being able to resurface our driveway with it, move dirt around, um, and all sorts of things. But the main reason is that snowblower. All right, I think that's it. If you guys have any questions about anything, leave them in the comments below. Um, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks.